Welcome back. This week we are working on finishing our office makeover and our DIY office built-ins. When we first moved in, there were two sets of French doors leading into this totally open space with all outdated carpet. Since then, we have replaced the carpet with a premium laminate wood flooring. We took the French doors down and we built our very first two walls from scratch in order to divide the space off and make it an actual room. For several months, we used the new wall as our office side of the room, and we used the other side as our kids' play area, since this is the only bonus space in our home. I couldn't stand the look and function of the room, so we decided to continue with our room makeover and add a wall of built-in cabinets and desks on this large empty wall. We went thrifting to try to find cabinets to help keep costs down and save time on building cabinets. I came across the most amazing find, five IKEA PAX cabinets for just $50 each, already assembled, and with multiple shelves and baskets in them. We bought the two best cabinets, rented a truck for just $19, and brought them home to turn into built-ins. In part two, I shared how we installed the IKEA cabinets and built two upper DIY cabinets for each side of the IKEA cabinets to add additional storage. So today we are going to move forward with the crown molding, putting plywood underneath of the upper cabinets to make them more built in and hide the crank holes. We are also going to be adding feedboard on each side of our Ikea cabinets. Then we will add baseboard and then we will do all the prep for paint and finally get these cabinets primed and painted. I cannot wait to see them painted and see this vision really start to come to life. Brandon is starting off with adding some quarter inch plywood to the bottom of the upper cabinets. After studying a lot of beautiful photos on Pinterest of different built-in cabinets, I noticed they all had this finishing touch and I specifically designed the cabinet face frames so that they would hide the front edge of this plywood to make them really look built-in and custom. The next step is crown molding. We need to do two inner and outer corners, which is a bit of a challenge. Brandon has really improved his crown molding skills though in the past year, so I'm letting him tackle this project. He's starting with the easy straight cuts first before he moves on to coping the inner corners. Okay, so the first problem when I ran into doing crown molding, um, I was able to do, use the coping saw, do a nice edge here, and then when I came up to fit it in place, the angle, it was not lining up correctly. So it was driving me crazy, and what I ended up doing was I had to reinstall this. So I, I took it out with a pry bar, gently so I didn't damage the ceiling or the cabinet too much and I fit it back up against the ceiling and use the speed square to show that it was at 90 degrees on this face with the ceiling and then also I put a level underneath it to make sure I was installing it even on both sides um, and once I did that I was able to bring my piece back up and relieve a lot of frustration because uh, now it fits pretty nicely <laughs> and we can work with that. After several trial and error cuts and an extra trip to the store to get more crown molding, he figured out the corner cuts and they look really great. For the beadboard, the first side was relatively easy to install because we 
are working with a new full sheet of beadboard paneling, which we cut to size. For the beadboard on the other side, I wanted to try to use some scrap beadboard up that we already had from another project to save money. Unfortunately, the scrap beadboard was not quite big enough and we had to piece together three smaller pieces. I tried to plan them out so the cut lines would be where our built-in desk and shelves are going and get covered, but I'm a bit worried about how it's going to look and if I even had these measurements right. Now I'm thinking I should have just spent the money for another full sheet of beadboard to get this right. With the beadboard up, now I can get the baseboard and quarter round cut to size and installed. I can't get over how much baseboard and crown molding has really started to transform these DIY built-in cabinets. There's a lot of prep work to do though before we paint them and really see the transformation. Brandon is going to work on filling holes and caulking and I'm going to start with cleaning the IKEA cabinets. With the laminate finish on IKEA cabinets, they have to be clean first with a degreaser before they can be primed and painted. Plus, with these cabinets being a thrift store find, they're extra dirty. For priming the IKEA cabinets, we are trying out a new type of primer that I've heard great things about and the paint store manager recommended to me for these IKEA cabinets. I'm always seeking the best way to paint IKEA furniture and I'm always trying different things. Let me know in the comments below if you have found a favorite way to paint IKEA furniture. We seriously cannot wait to cover up this messy green paint job on these IKEA cabinets that they had on them when we found them at the thrift store. Well, we were almost finished with our first paint cuts when we realized that we were using the wrong color. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we were using a color called Evergreen Fog by Sherwin Williams, which was from my son's board and batten wall. And it's a very similar looking color. And thankfully we did realize it when we were almost finished the first paint cuts because that would have not been good if we got all the way through the painting and then realized it. But yeah, this is gonna definitely set us back some time here. <sighs> DIY fail. Always make sure to check your paint color before you start painting. <laughs> After painting with the right color, I am just in love with how these built-ins are turning out. When we first moved into this house, these windows behind me, they had these awful cheap blinds on them. 
they were all tangled up, they weren't working right, and I couldn't stand the look of them, so I took them down immediately. I never got around to putting any new window treatments on them because I knew that this office makeover was going to be a future project, and I wanted to wait to finalize my plan with it before I figured out the window treatments. Because we've been working in this space as our office since we've moved in with no window treatments, the sun is a problem in the afternoon and I have been using my son's swaddle blanket as a makeshift curtain with the old hardware that's still there from the blinds. I'll show you how this works. You just put a blanket, or I use a swaddle blanket, on the old hardware and then you clip it again on the other side. There you go. It's the quickest, easiest, free window treatment. <laughs> but yeah, not very practical. Anyways, we are going to be putting beautiful bamboo blinds up to help filter this light and provide a lot of warmth and texture to the space. But before we can do that, I want to add some window trim in between each of these three windows it's going to allow us to have a more custom look with our shades. To give you a visual, in our bedroom, we put two shades up next to each other and they did not have any kind of divider piece. It looks a little funny with them next to each other. To do this, I'm just using some scrap quarter inch plywood and some scrap one by twos and two by two furring boards. And then I'm going to trim it out on the front with a primed 1x3 and then we'll paint it and caulk it and it'll all look a lot more cohesive. Well, my simple idea for this failed. We tested this out and put one up and it's not stable enough. It wobbles. <laughs> So we need to come up with a new solution, something more stable, which means we're probably gonna have to buy some new wood for this project, which is very unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> we ended up ripping some one by threes down to size, and this worked much better since they are three quarters of an inch thick. I just attached them together with scrap two by twos, wood glue and brad nails, and then I screwed them to the current window trim. We rebuilt this box frame with three quarter inch thick wood on each side and it is so much more sturdy. I don't know why we didn't do this from the start. I think we were just trying to use our scrub wood up, but this is definitely a lot more solid. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the one by three front trim board and then we can repeat everything for the other side and then these windows will be ready for painting and then our new window treatments. I think this new trim between the windows makes them look much more custom and a craftsman style. It's really a small detail, but I think it makes a big difference visually. Now we can install our new bamboo blinds. I found these blinds on Amazon and I was specifically looking for budget-friendly bamboo blinds that could also be cut to size. Unfortunately, the screws that came with these blinds are stripping really terribly and giving Brandon a hard time. We're going to use our own screws instead once he can get the stripped screws removed. I absolutely love the warmth and texture that these blinds are bringing to the room and that the blinds do not touch each other and they are each in their own little trim box. This room is really starting to feel like a real room that's put together and it's really nice to finally have real window treatments up again instead of my swaddle blanket hack. Good morning! I'm really excited because today we are making our cabinet doors. Now this isn't my first time making cabinet doors. I have made them in the past using more beginner friendly methods. The easiest method that I like to use is where you just attach a sheet of plywood to the back of the door, which is what I did for these garage cabinet doors. Super easy and it looks great. But from the back, it's not the most professional looking method. Another method that I've also used is using pocket holes with the Craig Jig to install half inch plywood inside of the frame. 
and that way you get the more professional look from the front. Both of these methods have worked great for me in the past, but this time around for these cabinet doors, I really wanted to try to advance my skills here and try a more professional method when it comes to making cabinet doors. After doing lots of research, I learned that one of the best ways to make more professional style cabinet doors is using a router table with a rail and style router bit. You can actually do something similar with a table saw, but of all the tutorials that I watched, I learned that the router table works better than using a table saw, so I decided if I'm going to take the time to learn this new skill, I should just use the most preferred method. So I made the investment to go ahead and buy a nice router table and the rail and style bit. And this cost a few hundred dollars, but I know that if I had ordered these custom sized doors, it would have cost me more than that, several hundred dollars. And with the large Ikea doors we're going to be making, those would have been extremely expensive to order. Before I get started, it's important to line everything up with the router bit and your router table and I'll link below this video exactly which video tutorials I watched that were super helpful in learning how to do all of this because it's really important that everything is lined up first. So I'm just starting with a piece of scrap wood here. Brandon was actually playing around with this earlier. That's why this has some of the grooves and tongue pieces already on it. On my scrap board here, I marked 3 16ths of an inch down, and that's where I want the top of my router bit to be, so it's gonna cut a groove right at that line, which is then going to be a quarter inch groove. the cabinet. <laughs> I did my first practice for the tongue part and it was a little scarier because I there were, I could feel like wood chips flying at me. <laughs> so they were small but I felt like I was doing something wrong and when I look at this like there's definitely some tear out and it looks like the router bit kind of burned the wood a little. I think I was holding it too high so I'm going to try like holding it back more and doing more passes and see if that helps. more shallow like multiple passes really helped there's way less of that dark burning there's still a little bit but way less and like very minimal tearing so I think that's the key to getting this right before I move forward I need to test this tongue here and make sure it fits in my groove well before I do the actual board for the door I am definitely going to need some more practice here with the tongue edge of these boards, but I'm slowly getting the hang of it. I am noticing that these pre-primed boards seem like a little bit more difficult to use for this process because they, the primer part chips off really easily with the router bit. So I think going forward I would try this with just either premium pine or poplar. Alright, I have all of the boards cut to size with their tongue and grooves on them and now I'm just going to do a dry fit to see how everything fits together. <laughs> After dry fitting this, uh, we need to adjust our plywood measurements. It's a little short but this will still work. We can still use this and glue this up the right way, but when we make the next set, we'll have to adjust our plywood cut so it's a more like snug, perfect fit. But I think for my first cabinet door, this looks pretty good. 
And I don't see if it's square. Right. And it's square. Obviously the door is not totally perfect, but that's okay. I will be able to use wood filler and sanding and make it look really good. And I'm just, I'm so proud of it. I'm going to go ahead and glue it up and for gluing it, all of the tutorials I watched said to just focus on gluing like the tongue ends and inside the grooves, but you don't need to put it on like the plywood edges. I'll show you what I mean here. And then once that's done, you just clamp it up and let it dry. And then I'm just going to repeat everything and make three more doors than the big doors. <laughs> For the two larger three panel doors for our Ikea cabinets, Brandon and I spent some time making all of the board cuts and routing all of the tongue and grooves. One of the biggest differences with these larger doors is that they have grooves on both sides of two of the rail boards, which are the horizontal middle boards. Putting these massive doors together is really nerve wracking. I keep thinking like, is this going to work out? Are these boards not fitting right? Is this going to be a totally crooked door? After some time, Brandon and I were able to dry fit the door together, which was a huge relief. Now we can glue it up. We keep saying that the motto of this huge office makeover project in these built-ins is that it's good enough. I can't even begin to explain how amazing it feels to challenge myself to learn something new and advance my skills. It's such a refreshing and rewarding feeling. I'm very grateful that I took the time to research and learn how to do this new method, even though it did take quite a bit more time than I wanted it to. I'm super excited because today we are finally painting our cabinet doors and then once this is finished we can go ahead and hang them up on our built-in cabinets. We've been without doors on these cabinets for several weeks so this is just really exciting. We've already prepped the doors with wood filler and sanded them. Also Brandon primed them and then we lightly sanded the primer because primer can slightly raise the wood grain and then we wipe them down with tack cloth. So these are all ready for paint. We're going to start with the back of the doors first. That way, if there's any paint that kind of sticks when we turn them over, it'll be on the back and not the front where we want a flawless finish. The key to painting cabinet doors is using a type of paint that is specifically formulated for cabinet doors and trim. In the past, I've used Benjamin More Advanced, which I love, but for this project, I tried a new type of paint by Sherwin-Williams. I'll show a clip of it, I forget what it's called. But basically, with these paints, they are self-leveling and they're extra durable, so they work really well for cabinetry. paint on the back of the doors is dry, so we're going to flip them over and paint two coats on the front sides and edges. As I'm painting the door edges, I can't get over how seamless the edges look now that they're primed and painted. You can't even see the routed joint anymore, and they look really professional to me.
today is a really big day. We let the cabinet doors dry overnight outside in the garage so they could cure a little bit more. And then this morning we drilled hinge holes on them. So we're going to be installing the doors on the cabinets, which I seriously cannot wait to do. But before we get to that, we actually have another project going on in here. Brandon's dad is here and he is going to help us with our ceiling light. Basically, what happened with this room is that when we built the wall, the light was no longer centered in the room and it's really bothering me that it's so off center. In order to fix this, I bought two different ceiling medallions that are very large. One is more rectangular and the longest and that would center the light the best. But this other round medallion caught my eye. I think this round medallion is perfect for the vibe and style I am going for in this room. With the round medallion, the light will not be perfectly centered, but it will be more centered, so I think it will still look more balanced. But we won't know for sure until Brandon's dad gets up there and sees if he can move the light fixture easily. Otherwise, we will have to hire an electrician <laughs> or just deal with the light being off-centered. But let me show you the light I got to go with the medallion. It's really beautiful and cute. Here is, it's called a semi flush mount light, I believe, for the ceiling. And it's obviously not all attached, but I love it. It's the perfect blend of like a modern vintage look. And I'm going to be doing a lot of brass touches in here. So I love the color. I found this on Amazon. I'll link it below. I thought it was a really good deal. I think it's really going to be one of those smaller details that really helps to make this room feel more like a room with style and purpose and really help bring everything together. We are moving the light as close to the center as we can with the round medallion. The medallion is 24 inches wide so we can move the light 12 inches closer to the center and still hide the original hole and avoid any kind of drywall repair. To easily move the light and line it up correctly with the ceiling medallion, we're just using this mechanism called a ceiling brace. It's basically a tension rod between two ceiling joists, so you only have to drill one new hole where you need it. They use it a lot of times for installing ceiling fans. Sounds like a simple process in theory, but it's actually taking several tries to get it right. And it really doesn't help that you can't see everything that you're doing in the ceiling and that insulation just keeps falling down. Brandon and I ended up spending two more days trying to install the new light. Because the medallion added over two inches in length, we had to get longer screws. But after getting the wrong screw size, multiple trips to the hardware store, and adjusting the screw length on the ceiling brace itself multiple times, we were finally able to get the new light installed. Thank goodness. I absolutely love the look and vintage feel it's bringing to the room though, and I think it looks so much better. I'm really glad we didn't have to spend extra time and money hiring this project out. It is finally time to install our cabinet doors. Installing these large doors with four hinges on them is not an easy task. Brandon is helping me, and we're also using our miter saw extension jig to hold the door up while we screw it in place. Luckily, the jig is exactly the height we need it to be. With installing the hinges, you really only get one chance to get the hole right, otherwise you have to re-drill new hinge holes. Thankfully though, these concealed hinges are adjustable at the end, so you can get your door placement just right. This is really crucial for these two huge doors. Literally while we were installing these doors, our hardware arrived and I could not wait to open the box and see it next to the doors. For the upper cabinet doors, I'm trying out a new Craig jig for mounting the doors. I really like it and it's making the installation process much easier for me. I will link this handy jig below in the description box. We have run into a big problem. 
somehow our calculations were off and these doors are too big for the opening of the face frame. I have no idea how this happened because we actually had to rebuild these doors once already because we messed up the measurements since this side is different in size than the other side. We were in a huge time crunch to get this project finished. So Brandon's solution is that we just trim like a little bit off of the edges on each door. I think that's gonna look really funny with the trim being different sizes than the rest of the trim, but I'm willing to try it. And if it doesn't work out, then we will have to rebuild these doors when we can find time. <laughs> Let's see if Brandon's idea is going to work. Luckily, Brandon's idea worked out and you really can't tell that the two inner door framed edges are about an eighth inch less than the rest of the boards, unless you stare really closely at it and you know it's there. This is just another instance for this room makeover where the phrase good enough works for us on this project. With the doors installed, we are going to move forward with our two built-in desks. I'm using two by threes and pocket holes to build the frames for them. These desks are really easy to build because they're basically just a floating desk. Originally, I did want to install drawers on them, but I ended up deciding not to because we really don't need the drawers with the pull-out baskets that we have for the IKEA cabinets. It's always a team effort installing these things to the wall and our pup Chance, he is always around to help manage the project. <laughs> desks it is time to build the top of them and for these desk tops I wanted the front trim on them to match the top of the desk and to also keep this project really low cost so I'm using half inch birch plywood and I'm going to be using this for both the desk tops and also the floating shelves to keep the cost down and also Birch is a more affordable plywood. Because plywood is unfinished though, and I wanted the joint between the front trim and the top of it to look really seamless, I decided to bevel the front edges together. We went ahead and made our plywood cuts, and we used our circular saw and a straight edge guide jig that we made. We made the cuts with the circular saw at a 45 degree angle so that we could bevel the front edges of both our front trim piece and our front desktop board. We also cut a small one inch board to put behind the front trim board so that there will be a one inch overhang on the front of the desk. Now I'm just going to join everything together with wood glue and a few brad nails. If I were to build these desktops again, I would definitely use three quarter inch thick plywood instead of the half inch, but I wanted to save money by using the same plywood we already bought for our floating shelves, so I'm just making it work. My joint isn't perfect here, but I'm using this little hack where you can rub the wood fibers together with a screwdriver to help blend the joint. It works best when your gap is smaller to begin with though, and it won't fix a large gap well. I'm also going to use a little sanding too. For our floating shelves, we are repeating basically the same steps as our floating desks, except I'm using thinner wood for the frame to make the shelf thinner. It's similar to what I did for my thin DIY wood shelf for our laundry room. I have a step-by-step -step video tutorial for that that I'll link below. But I am using half inch plywood for all sides of the shelves, which is a little different than I did on my laundry room shelf. And I'm also beveling the front edges, just like I did for the two desktops. Before we install the desktops and floating shelves, I'm staining everything outside first. I definitely don't want to stain inside with this oil-based stain and the oil-based poly that I'm going to use because it's very fumey. In the meantime, we are finally installing our cabinet hardware. 
Drilling holes on these nearly eight foot tall doors that we built is a bit stressful. <laughs> After all of our hard work, the last thing we want is a crooked door pool or two pools that aren't level with each other. I'm trying this Craig hardware jig out for the first time to help. Unfortunately, it goes up to just five inch pools and ours are six inches. So we can't use it to drill both holes at once, but it's helping us to at least drill a perfectly straight hole. Our stain dried overnight on the shelves and I'm super excited to see them installed. For installing the front of these shelves, I'm using wood glue and a few nails just like the desktop, except this time I remembered to put painter's tape where I'm nailing. This is just another little hack, so when I fill these holes with wood filler, the wood filler won't go all over my stained finish and it's going to blend the nail hole better. I'm also trying to use painter's tape to hold the board in place while the glue dries since I'm not using as many nails. Before we install our desktops, I want to install our new picture lights above the desks. I fell in love with the look of these lights. They have kind of that vintage look and just so much character compared to everything else I was finding online. But they do come with a plug-in cord, which I really want to hide. I'm determined to hide every single cord for these built-ins because I can't stand the look of messy cords. Our plan is to drill holes in the wall and hide the cords behind the drywall and beadboard, then pull them out right below the desk frame. By doing that, we can run the cords through a hole in the IKEA cabinets where our outlet is located. We are also planning to run our computer cords through this hole as well. It was a bit of a struggle to find the cord through the bottom hole, and I did get some drywall dust in my eyes, but we managed to make it work. We're using these little hole cord covers to hide the holes. I will link all of these items below this video. We are down to our final to-do list today and we are wrapping up all of the finishing touches for the office built-ins. We're going to finish the front of the shelves, do paint touch-ups, install the desktop, and we're going to add a fresh coat of paint to our thrifted chairs that we have owned for years. It is finally time to decorate and the very first decor piece that I want to bring into this room and hang up is this DIY wood sign. This wood sign is really special to me because I started my DIY blog back in 2015 and this sign was one of the very first projects that I shared on my blog how to make and I taught myself calligraphy and hand lettering and I actually have the design as a free printable so you can make your own sign as well but it was one of my very first projects I shared that went viral on Pinterest and it was just such an exciting time for me and ever since then I've always just tried to keep this phrase in mind with things in life whether I'm actually creating a DIY project that I want to bring to life that seems challenging or if it's an actual like goal or a dream of mine that I'm trying to achieve so I just I love the sign and the meaning of it and it's just really exciting and special that I can finally get it hung up in our office again. For the other decor pieces, I kind of have a collection of things from that I've saved over time or thrifted, as well as some new pieces that I'm incorporating, and I'm just really excited to see how these built-ins look decorated.
these built-ins and the space is just about complete. We have come so far with this room, which we started transforming over a year ago from building walls to this whole wall of built-ins and all the projects that entailed. It was a huge project and it definitely took longer than I anticipated, but it was definitely worth it. And I'm proud of Brandon and I for pushing ourselves to learn new things. I seriously can't wait to fill all of these cabinets up with things that are still in boxes and just really start using this space for our office. I really hope you enjoyed this DIY makeover video and everything involved in it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're actually not 100% finished with this room. We still need to add our French doors back on and finish the window. We also have some more work to do on the other side of the room, which is going to be the playroom side of the space for our kids. So we've got to do some organization projects and making it just both functional and cute and fun for the kids all at the same time. So make sure to subscribe and follow along so you don't miss any more fun projects. The next big project I believe we're going to be tackling is our garage and adding some storage there. So again, you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching.